Do you like it? Do you think Cleveland's cool? I mean, I never heard anybody say I'm going to Cleveland on vacation. I mean, what's so good about Cleveland? York, New York, big city of dreams. New York, New York, big city of dreams. So good about Cleveland, guys. What's going on? It's Jealous from Nick of Time Show. Here giving you that Knicks talk just in the nick of time. And it's time to celebrate an historic win because the Knicks beat down the Cleveland Cavaliers 99 to 79. This is the first time all season any NBA team has been under. 80 points, so bust those shots in the sky for the New York Knicks. And welcome back, RJ Barrett, who had a great game today and really put the pedal to the metal in the first quarter, scoring 10 points in the first quarter. But overall, gives us 19 points, eight rebounds, three assists, and a steal. Bust those shots from RJ Barrett. Brunson had a good game bounce back game for us as well. 21 points, six assists, and two steals. Josh Hart chips in with 13 and six. Quickly chips in with 11. The rebounding battle, that's the battle that everybody's been really concentrating on. It was pretty even, but it didn't matter because the Knicks still pull out the win with the defense, gave them 14 steals. Season high for us, 14 steals on the night. 28 to 8 points off turnovers advantage Knicks. And at one point, these Knicks were up by 27 points. Shout out to the Knicks who took care of business at home in front of our home crowd. And we did it in style. We did it with defense. We did it together. We, we, we did it with ball movement and we came out with the win. So kudos to the New York Knicks who performed. They gave us a show because it was an electric. It was electric over there at MSG land. I loved it. I loved it. I loved every minute of it. So salute to my guys. Salute to the Knicks and shout out to everybody here is rock with the KOT show and also shout out to FUBU TV. If you want to watch the Knicks for free, if you don't want to watch it on TNT because you're tired of listening to Reggie Miller and those guys talk Knicks, yo, go to FUBU TV, get MSG for free for seven days. And if you decide to keep it, we get a cut because, and you know what? You can also cut the subscription whoever you want. So shout out to FUBU TV. Now let me introduce you to my guys. Shout out to the man, the myth, the legend, the guy with the stats and facts. Ryan G's in the building. Knicks go up 2-1 first and foremost. I want to shout out the Bodman. The Bodman. RJ Barrett, because he stepped up tonight. Yes, I sir. Just wanna know if he, and I just want to know if these bum-ass Knicks fans who targeted him for the first two games in Cleveland, act like he was the only one playing bad in Cleveland. Give him a That's what I want to know. I'm yeah, bringing the smoke Ryan tonight. The smoke it's, it's, a happy, it's a happy night tonight, but I'm bringing the smoke tonight. You're bringing the smoke fans. anyway. We don't care. We don't Love care. It. That was for you. That was for you, Stephen A. All right. <laughs> I didn't even watch ESPN. I didn't even watch the take. I just saw the clips and said, no, I'm protecting my mental health. All right. <laughs> Shout out to my guy, also ESPN contributor, uh, posting and toasting contr contributor, Desmond contributor, the Latin assassin, my man Lee Escobedo is in the building. What's going on, Lee? Everybody calm down, calm down. I no. did alert the police. I let <laughs> JB, I let them know that JB Bicker staff was grave robbing the night. Man, he was stealing caskets. He stole Ricky Rubio's coffin. He, he stole uh, Robin Lopez's coffin. <laughs> he stole Danny Green's coffin. Yeah. I saw three zombies on the court tonight. Three <laughs> old gray beard bums out there giving horrible bench minutes. As I've been saying all season, Cavs have an ass bench. And boy, J.B. Bickerstaff dusted off the coffins tonight. Yeah, yeah. And this what? This is not Walking Dead. The dead can't save you. The Knicks took pair of business, all right? <laughs> Action hero style. <laughs> Some Iron Legend style, okay? Pretending those zombies are Chris Rock and smack the hell out of them, all right? That's how we do it today. <laughs> That's how we do it. That's how we roll it today, man. But I, I, man, I want to start off by saying one of Lee's patented cast phrases. I want to, I want to, Lee, do you know who was outside, Lee? 
Tom Thibodeau was outside. <laughs> Let's go. Let's Uncle go. Tibbs. Tibbs is outside. Tibbs was not Tibbing anymore. He left no. Tibbing in December 2022. This yes, is New did. Year, new Tibbs, and he's adjusting all willy-nilly all over the all over the place. When the game first started, the first thing I saw was wow, our offense looks really different this game. They had Brunson going off ball. They had uh, Julius Randle playing the decoy. They had other people initiating the offense. There were various screens. We we they didn't they would you didn't even see the big the, the small screens anymore. We saw small the small screens. We saw we saw uh, um, Josh Hart and Quentin Grimes screaming screening Brunson anymore. So now in the ISOs you don't see seven foot. Do uh, Jared Allen's arms over here blocking him, blocking passes and stuff. You just switching between Garland and, <laughs> and Mitchell, and now he's able to cook adjustments everywhere. I haven't seen Grimes moving off ball, and somebody sending a screen for Grimes to get an open three. Now, granted, we didn't hit a lot of open look. We didn't hit a lot of looks in the beginning. But to me, what's really important besides the scoring is the process. Is a process that you're executing, giving you open looks. People before were like complaining, man, we, we missed every shot, but they were heavily contested shots. But from the jump, we were getting wide open looks. And even though it was a tie game 17-17 in the first quarter, I felt really good about where we were because of the open looks that we produced in that first quarter because of Tom Thibodeau being outside and adjusting. Okay. Okay. I, I don't, Lee, Lee, what, what do you think of this game? I don't know if you have anything to build off what I just said, or you have something else you want to notice. I guess at some point in January, Colin Farrell put on the penguin makeup and went out to the Knicks uh, <laughs> sidelines and, and did his best Tibbs impression. Because, man, my, my boy's cooking at night in the playoffs. It's night and day from a 2020 playoff series. I yeah. didn't say Atlanta Hawks where Tibbs, you know, put both feet in the ground and didn't move or, or budge when it came, came to end game and game to game adjustments. Took him three games to sit over Peyton. I think we're really seeing Tom Thibodeau be, be more uh, – be more like water and flow what the game is giving them. And really that RJ Barrett, a concerted effort in the first quarter to get RJ Barrett downhill, yeah. setting screens for him as well to be, to be on ball. It doesn't no matter who switches on RJ Barrett. There's not a perimeter guy who can guard him. Exactly. Him. So he got to the basket and he was really keeping the ball moving, which when RJ Barrett's hitting shots, what does that do? It opens up the game for Jalen Brunson as well. Yeah. And you made a good point there. Even though Randall wasn't hot, he was still a detour no matter what because you can't leave a guy open. And they still sent double teams to him in the first half, which continued to leave the lanes open for uh, the slashers and cutters on the Knicks. I thought it was a really great coaching game. I wrote my preview. Only two things can happen. Either you change the, the, the steaming for the type of ball strains that you're setting, trying to get Brunson a little easier opportunities and weaker defenders, which Tibbs did. And also the other guys got to shoot. Because yeah. when the other guys are scoring – you can't blitz Brunson anymore because that means you that guy you're leaving open is now hitting an a, a uncontested three. And that happened. Uh, Obi got into, into the fray. Josh Hart got into the fray. IQ got into the fray. Our other guys, with the exception of Grimes and Randall, finally stepped up and hit big shots. No one bigger than R.J. Barrett. He, he took the bad, had a bad, bad man, and had a fantastic <laughs> game tonight on both sides of the court. Yeah. Score transition at ease. What do you got to say, Ryan? I know you want to get into this. Yeah, um, yeah, first and foremost, you know, early in the game, both teams were struggling, and RJ Barrett's offense really carried the Knicks early in the game and helped them to um, at least, you know, at least keep even with the Cavaliers early in the game. And I was just, I think overall, I was just happy to see RJ Barrett perform tonight because I did not like the witch hunt that was going on on social media for RJ Barrett when he was not the only Nick who played bad in Cleveland. I thought they were unfairly targeting RJ Barrett. So first and foremost, before I get into the analysis of the game, I want to big up RJ Barrett because he deserved it. He played good tonight. Yes, sir. And yes. I'm glad that I'm, I, I'm hoping that he shut up a whole lot of bum Knicks fans out there who are going after him like as if he was the only one playing bad in Cleveland. That's number one. Absolutely. Number two, 
off ball movement. That game two, we saw no off ball movement from the Knicks. Everybody was just stationary and they were just isolating, going one on one and just driving to the teeth of the defense, which wasn't producing anything. Today, you actually saw actual ball movement off ball and guys finding guys for easy baskets, going to the baskets. So that was the one adjustment Thibs made. And as you guys said, another adjustment was screening with the smaller guys and causing mismatches for Brunson. So Brunson could take him off the dribble and either score or pass to an open guy. That's another adjustment. And overall, the Knicks defense was just special tonight. Special. You know, in, early in the game, the Cavaliers were missing open shots. Yep. But I think both teams were missing open shots for the most part early in the game. But then the Knicks defense really clamped down mm-hmm. and really shut down the Cavaliers as the game went on and held them to 79 points, which is the lowest point total any team's had all season, which is crazy. So you have to definitely pick up the Knicks defense. I think the, I think the main thing now is Okay, you win game three. And I think there's a stat out there that says teams that win game three and go up 2-1 in the series, I think, like, I heard a stat saying, like, 80% of those teams or something like that, or near 80% of those teams actually go on to win the series. What I want the Knicks to do right now is, okay, you take game three. Do not rest on your laurels because you saw in game two what a what a desperate Cleveland Cavaliers team is capable of. Mm-hmm. Make sure in game four you match that intensity because you have the home crowd behind you. Match that intensity and make sure that you don't let the Cavaliers out hustle you in that game. Because if you out hustle, if, if, if the Knicks out hustle the Cavaliers, there's no team, to, there's no way the Cavaliers can beat the Knicks. The only yep. way the Cavaliers beat the Knicks is if they out hustle them. That's the only way. The, the crazy part is the hustle stats you really look at is the rebounds. The reboundings were even, guys. Like, as, as, as a big deal as everybody made rebounding, as, as, and we did too. Rebounding was pretty much even. They actually have a little bit more offensive rebounds than us. But it, the defense, we just generated so many steals and got out into fast breaks that it didn't even matter that we wasn't getting as many second ch- chance points at the rim, even though we got a, a decent amount. We were just producing a lot more looks at the basket by turning them over and over again. Points off turnovers, advantage Knicks, 28 to 8. RJ Bad himself seemed like he he was the, the 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 beneficiary of a lot of those turnovers and got out into the open lane and was actually finishing around the rim on top of shooting those threes. So so kudos to RJ Barrett, played a great game. You can go down the line to everybody who had a great game. RJ had a great game. Mitch was a beast today. Mitch, Mitch really was bodying people up, dunking on people's head, rebounding. I think Mitch defensively, um, Mitch defensively stepped up over the first two games when Garland was in that paint area or when he was guarding the three, Mitch would have his hand down. He wasn't really into active. He was only interested in really guarding the rim but he showed in the paint at three point line, but he never actually tr- distracted him or put up a hand. T- today, Garland was was in the paint blocking shots. Today, Donovan Mitchell pulls up a three instead of Mitch dropping. He's coming up, and he's not just coming up; he's blocking shots. So Mitch today was so engaged on the defensive end on three levels of defense at the rim, at the paint and at the three-point line. So I was really happy with uh, the minutes that, that Mitch produced today. I'm, I'm, I haven't lived the plus minus, but I'm pretty sure he was a plus on that. Yeah, Shout plus 19. Out. Plus 19. Mm-hmm. I mean, I talked about it in depth before the series started. We beat them at every matchup but shooting guard, and that has proven itself to be true. We have a better coach. We have a better point, small forward, power forward center, and most importantly, a way better bench. I make a lot of jokes about the three old bums they got on the bench, but let's be honest. Raul Neto, Lamar Stevens, Dean Wade, these guys aren't doing anything either. They've had to move Kara Savert into the starting unit because Isaac Curl has been so bad mm-hmm. on the perimeter. He's shot even worse than RJ. He's been total ass offensively. So now with Kara Savert in the starting lineup, they have no bench. Our second unit is taking full advantage of their second unit when they're matched up. Yeah. Yeah. For real. And I, I gotta give tips, kudos to 
because you know what was happening in that second game when when we was using Mitch as the screener. They would trap Brunson. They would give the ball to Mitch at the foul line, and then Mitch would just be looking around with nobody to pass to. Yep. And he was scared to make a move by taking Mitch out of that whole action completely. You you're, you're now litigating. You're now you're taking away Mitch's ability to just be a deer in headlights on offense and take him back to his strength. He's not a playmaker at the foul line. Uh, at a high volume. He's not a guy who can drive to the rim right now. I think next season for Mitch, that's going to be the next thing. If they leave you, you know, be some eye of an offensive threat if they leave you on the foul line. Um, but uh, they, by not having him set the screens, it really opened up our offense a lot. So really, really good job by this Knicks, the offensive team, Tibbs, Johnny Bryant. Everybody, man, it was, it was great. And you know, to to add on to what Ryan said, I think he made a good point. The off ball movement was as much as I would still want to see from. I mean, any of us want to see from the Knicks, but it, it was better than Game Two. And the guys that he had straining, the guys who, who were there instead of Mitch, are better playmakers. RJ was playmaking tonight. Obi was playmaking tonight. Randall was playmaking tonight. Quickly was playmaking tonight. They were finding other guys who were moving off ball and didn't open the perimeter on off ball screens to catch and get easy wide open threes instead of having to work against Isaac Okoro and uh, uh, Seti Osman to try to you know step back and yeah. pull up and sidestep threes that the shots were much cleaner, like you mentioned on Twitter, and much more efficient and easier looks. That was key. Yeah. That was super key. That was super key. Uh, so, yo, salute to the chat, too. If you want to call in, you can do that, man. Dial that number, 319-527-6241. That's 319-527-6241. If you want to call in and talk Knicks basketball with your boys at the KOT show. Lots to talk about. Lots to talk about. Um, Him. This guy. Him. Let's go. Runs him. 21 points, 6 assists. 10 of 18 from the field. You can't keep a good man down, Ryan G. You already know that, okay? The, the Knicks, what I love about this game was the bench and the other guys, the ancillary players came in and did their thing and they gave Brunson time to work the game slowly. So by the time he's like, you know what? I can get to my ice or I'll get to my spots. He was able to really cook without forcing it the entire game. And because they haven't seen like a steady diet of Brunson ISO the whole game, they were kind of thrown off a little bit. They didn't even know what to expect. And he was able to cook them more efficiently. And he really did his work at that foul line area, you know, waiting for the double team to Aaron, sometimes cooking, sometimes dumping it off the Hartenstein, stopping up, sometimes dumping into the corner for people to hit three. Obi's hitting threes. Every quickly. Quick shout out to the coach who had quickly in there with, with Grimes and giving him some space. Like it, all these adjustments that Coach Thibodeau's made has allowed Brunson to really, really have a great game. So shout out to him, the best man in the series. I said it before game one. I'm going to say it again. Jalen Brunson, him, best man in the series. I, I know Donovan Mitchell is a great player, but the ability to play that slower, to, to take your team dissected offensively with the scoring and passing when he has to, uh, and with the killer instinct, the top-notch clutch numbers, top four in the NBA in clutch shots. Jalen Brunson is him. I'm picking my man Jalen Brunson over Donovan Mitchell. I'm sorry. Same. Sorry. Hot takes. I already, I already cut that video. I had the hot take earlier. I'm going to say it again. Just for more hate, and just so I can piss off more Cleveland fans because they was in the comments before. <laughs> they some bums. They some bums, man. The, the 9 11 <laughs> jokes. I want to put my hand through the computer screen, smack these little 15 year old kids, man. I hope they're 15 years old because if they're older than 18, man, they really deserve some hands for real. <laughs> nah, they were old. He was older. He was older. It was cool. It was cool. Yo, I'm talking about the 9 11 jokes. Then. Oh, you say? I'm talking about for the 9-11 jokes, man. Those 9-11 jokes about the – that's too oh, far, man. Those are the ones I'm talking about who need some hands. Yeah, you can talk smack, but you start talking about people dying and blowing up in buildings and planes. Oh, man, that's – I saw a lot of that on Twitter, man. It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Cat fans making 9-11 jokes. 
a bunch of grown men living still living in their mama's basement making 9-11 jokes. Yep. Yeah. Hey, I'm glad I missed that. I'm glad I missed yeah. that. It's funny. Tw- Yo, Lee has just joined Twitter like last week, and he's deep <laughs> in Twitter. <laughs> deep. <laughs> Yo, we told Lee to join Twitter, what, in like December? <laughs> Bro, bro got like a whole fan club. He, he following people. He's in all the I'm in the dark webs, bro. He's like cool with all Nick's Twitter people. Like, like, we... <laughs> Let me tell you something. I'm a lot friendlier person in, in, in real life now. I get along with everyone better because I did all my hate out on Twitter, bro. I did all my hate out. <laughs> shout out to Lou. We need, you need, we need more KLT presence in Twitter anyway. So <laughs> No doubt. Back. Yeah. Yo, Jason M sends a five dollars super chat. And says, "Put some respect on Tibbs. He adjusted to the Cavs over helping by driving and kicking to shooters' ball movement as best I've seen this team. Yeah, the ball yeah. movement was great. Ball movement was immaculate. It, and it's funny, the ball movement really doesn't reflect the score. You know what I mean? Like we had ninety nine points, but we missed a lot of open shots. I think we have to remember too, Julius." Julius Randle still hasn't had like a smack me down game. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of want to, I want to respond to, to my boy, Jason M man. He's been going in on the chat. He's dropping all facts right now in the chat right now. And I've missed Jason M in the chat. He is on my Mount Rushmore people that I like to debate with Jay Ellis is on my Mount Rushmore as well. <laughs> Jason M man. He's a sharp mind. I got to give you props brother. Uh, Cause I know you're watching right now. I was wrong about Tibbs this season for the most part. Me and you went edit. We went edit on Twitter. We went edit on the show, in the chat. My man, you've been a Tibbs supporter, and you were right about a lot of ways of him evolving and him having a seven-game series to really game plan and steam for another team. You said he would step up. I said he wouldn't. I was wrong. Shout out to Jason M, man. You know your stuff. Shout out, shout out to Jason M, man. I don't think Jason was here for a lot of the me versus Lee uh uh, Tibbs combos <laughs> for Dexter. Oh, the real intense ones, yeah. yeah the intense, <laughs> intense ones. He was here for like the beginning. He didn't. He wasn't here for like we were we were, we were going back and forth like blows, not real blows, but you know, fake yeah. blows. Of course. But <laughs> brother blows. Yeah, exactly, brother. Pause. Right. <laughs> <laughs> My guy. <laughs> Can I still say that? I don't even know if I can say it. Um, anyway, <laughs> Julius <laughs> Randle. <laughs> Julius Randle, right? <laughs> Yo, the crazy thing is, Julius Randle still hasn't been unleashed. This was the first game Julius Randle has actually played significant minutes without being winded. So um, he's still kind of working his way into the series. Um, but at some point, I'm looking for Julius Randle to have his patented 20-point explosion in the first quarter. And it hasn't exactly happened yet. Because like we said, Randle was open for three a lot, a lot today. A lot. And I'm going to predict right now, game four, we get those same looks. Um the game is going to be blown open even more. I, I think Randall is going to start to have his legs under him and his rhythm back by that point. And we're going to be having even bigger leads, um, especially if we keep up with this defense. But the key for really the Cavs is the others and Darius Garland. Because as you can see, you know, when in playoffs, you game plan to stop the other guy's best player and it's the ancillary players who have to respond. Garland didn't respond today, and the sh- the ship went down. <laughs> the ship went down. Um, I now yeah. guys did so shout out to our guys. Hold on, we got my guy Jason Emmons in the chat, so we gonna let's go, guy, Jason. All right, look at me, bro. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Jason, man, let us know what's what you- what's going on, Jason. Man, that was a crazy game. You know, I'm not gonna lie, going into this game. I was not even that confident. Like, I was worried because the way the Cavs changed their defense and set us down in game two, I was like, I don't know, man. I know what the Knicks have to do. Right. They never, you know, too, I was 
are they going to move the ball the way they're supposed to to break this defense? Like, is Randall, RJ, and even Brunson? Because Brunson could pass, but, you know, he likes to he likes to do him. Mm-hmm. So you could clearly tell, like, especially in the first quarter, they were driving to pass. Like, I've never seen them drive to pass so much ever, actually, as, as this team, I should say, with Tiff. Like, every time Randall and RJ went to the throw, almost every time they were looking to pass. Like, it was a great adjustment. And that, I think, is the key because the way the, the, the Cavs defend, the guys, they got two bigs coming over every time. Like, mm-hmm. it's hard to just shoot up. Like, you got to you gotta kick the ball to the open. And they didn't even hit a lot of those threes. No. Nope. So it's crazy that, like, they, I, I think offensively, I think the Knicks will play a lot better. But if they hit some of their threes, I think it, it would have been, it would have been a, 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 I mean, it was a blowout in the end, but it would have been a blowout a lot earlier. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know what it is, too? Um, Tip said this in the press conference before. He was talking about, um, you know, if, if you have them scrambling, right, and you move the ball around, even if you do shoot, they're out of position for offensive rebounds. So I kind of feel like, you know, they were scrambling. We, we missed a shot, but then you have the best off of re- offensive rebound big in the game, Mitch cleaning up for us when we missed no shot. So I think that had a lot to do with us still being in the game. Just just the fact that we made that pass just made it better for us, even though we were missing a lot of those shots. And I, I agree, like there's another gear for us, man. There is another gear for us to to beat this team in game four. Yeah. Yeah, and like, even early on when the Knicks were playing good, I was like, I don't know. Cause- you know, this is we're moving the ball good. I go, but we're not doing what we like to do. Like Brunson's not doing what he likes to do. But eventually he figured it out, you know. He got he finally got comfortable and he was like, Okay, now I know how to attack this team. Mm-hmm. And I think I think Sunday's gonna be a crazy game. I think offensively, I think we'll do the same thing. Hopefully we hit more shots. I think the Cavs might finally wake up. So I think it's gonna be a crazy game. So I think the Cavs you know, this is they were overwhelmed by the environment. Yeah. That's the other thing about this team. Yeah. In addition to all the adjustments, they, they're young. They're a young team like the Knicks. They, like, they just didn't seem like they were not ready for that crowd. And that's probably not going to be the case on Sunday. So it should be a, a much better game. And, I'm, you know, we'll see. We'll, we will see. We will see. Yo. Yo, thanks for calling in, Jason. It's been a minute. Appreciate you. Yeah. Mm. It's been a while. All love, know, Jason. I, I don't know. I, I haven't been called. I haven't called in. I haven't. I've, I've been kind of away from social media slash and next content for a while but you know i'll try to come on from time to time i i got you hey i pay hey, brother sometimes you gotta get away it was crazy out there this year right? <laughs> <laughs> it was nuts. it was nuts. i don't yeah, know nick's gonna be on crack sometimes man yeah. sometimes i gotta stay away from twitter myself exactly exactly Man, I, I leave it to Lee. I leave it to Lee to be on social. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Lee's good for the bum ass Knicks fan. Yeah, he's, he's good, good for good that. <laughs> bum ass Knicks Twitter. Oh man, can can I, can I get some love for IQ? Can we get some love for IQ too? Can we bust some bust some shots? More Tibbs adjustments coming at you. IQ was had a lot of success being the initiator all season, but the the beauty of IQ is his diversity. He can go from being the guy who initiates the offense to the guy who's playing off ball. Today, he pretty much brought the ball up and handed it off to RJ, and then RJ with attack off the handle. That's pretty much what the offense was for the bench. Um, and it allowed him to kind of just attack secondary closeouts, get to his floater, get some open threes passes from Randall, and, and just kind of operate in fast break situations. Pretty good bounce back game from IQ offensively. But even before offensively he got into rhythm, defensively, IQ, was a demon <laughs> okay because i feel i feel like darius garland got some open looks in the first quarter but the second quarter i feel like he got shut down <laughs> yeah 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 i don't know if you have anything to add to that no you're 100 right 100 <laughs> <laughs> no lies detected bro yeah pretty much 
And, yeah. and I think, all right, go ahead. No, I was just, that was just adding a small thing. And the thing I did like about Quickly tonight was Quickly was more decisive. But I think the reason why Quickly was more decisive was because he wasn't getting trapped like he, like he was getting in the Cleveland, like in the first two games in Cleveland. He had more space to operate. And because he had more space to operate, that allowed him to be more decisive. And I, and I think that's why the offense opened up a little bit because he had more space to operate due to the adjustments that Thibs made. And he was able to, as a result, be more effective on offense. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Once again, it's the small, the small screens. It wasn't even necessary a screen. It was like more of a screen dribble handoff. Gets all those big guys away from him. Like those type of traps to smaller guys who are also slim of frame are even more effective. Like you can't really see over Allen and Mobley or seven feet tall. You see, like it's pretty much impossible. So that was a, a, a nice little switch up. And and defensively, I know RJ, I know Tibbs had um RJ guarding Garland, and RJ did an admirable job. But I've said all season, I feel like RJ defending quicker guys is an issue. Uh, I feel like quicker guys have a tendency to blow by past them a little bit more. And it's not an effort thing. It's just, it's just, you know, it's just a quickness difference. So I feel like even though, you know, quickly is his size, the quickness difference just allows him to keep up with him a lot better. And I think that's why he was effective on defense today. Mm -hmm. Yep. And also shout out to Obi Toppin, who, who, out of everybody, I feel like Obi and Hartenstein, those guys never, I never, they never look fearful to me the entire yeah. series. Obi, he comes in, he'll hit an air ball and then he'll hit a three and then he'll go on the fast break and he kind of goes about his business. But it seems, I don't know, I don't know if playing under Tibbs in 10 minute stints. Kind of gave him the confidence to be like, pressure? What pressure? <laughs> like, <laughs> but Obi uh, played with no pressure offensively all series. Defensively has been pretty good all series as well. Um, and he played well in his short stint. I'm not sure his stats off the rip, but you can probably tell me, Ryan G, because you're probably looking at them right now. Yeah, eight points. Off of three of eight shooting, one of four from three, three rebounds, one assist. But I think the major stat is he had four steals tonight. Four steals from Obi Top. Yeah, the defense. The defense, man. But yeah. Major props to Isaiah Hartenstein, who Hartenstein, who's been probably the most consistent player throughout this three games uh mm -hmm. in the first round. He hasn't been, you know, anything eye popping on on the bot score. But he's been highly efficient defensively. He's also been really great as a playmaker. He had five assists in that game two loss. And I thought he was one of the few bright spots in that game two loss too. He has the highest plus minus of any player uh, going to game three. And I think he's the best backup center we've had since Marcus Camby, man. I mean, th there were so many times in the last couple of seasons, and even last season, where when the backup center would come in, whether it was Taj or if we had went small with yeah. ran up the five, it would just become a turnstile yeah, it was uh, in, in the paint. And Hartenstein is actually a really good at the rim defender. And the advanced mm -hmm. stats have, have measured that since his time in, in the Los Angeles Clippers. He was one of the best at the rim defenders in the NBA. And this year, he's right up there with Mitch in offensive rebounding and defensive rebounding. They're two of the top 10 uh, offensive rebounders in the NBA. So, I mean, Hartenstein has been a great signing. This has been a, a great offseason by Leon Rose to really upgrade this roster in the right way. In a more in a more subtle, less splashy way, and Hartenstein was absolutely one of those great pickups. Yeah, no, absolutely. And he's been owning Donovan Mitchell at the rim. Let's get, let's get, let's get him. He's been owning him at the rim, but the refs have been bailing him out because he's Donovan Mitchell. <laughs> but, but for real, Hartenstein has met him at the rim a few times, and he needs to chill and realize that uh, you you don't you, that's not a good business decision for you, my guy. You're like you, you're going to end up on the floor and block yep. and feelings hurt in New York in front of your family. We don't want that for you. So next time, game four, just stand down, stick to your jumpers, stick to your floaters. Don't be trying to posterize Hardenstein or Willie Nilly. That's all I have to say. All right. <laughs>
<laughs> now you see, you see this issue with Donovan Mitchell because he think he is, he thinks since he's athletic and that he can jump, he think he could just jump over anybody. But now you ain't gonna get hard seen at the rim. You are gonna get blocked. You gonna get, and you gonna get thrown to the ground. So exactly, I know you. I know you're athletic, Donovan Mitchell, but but chilling it, be chill. <laughs> hey, get the blocker, blocker. You got you chill guy, all right? <laughs> Shout out to my guy Alexander who gives you a four twenty super chat. We already know. We already know what she was doing. Yes, <laughs> we already know what she was doing two days ago. All right. Oh, Who man. says Obadiah Hive one hundred team ball Hive? <laughs> okay. Salute to you. Salute to you, man. All right. And last guy I want to point out, Josh Hart. Reincarnation of John Starks. All Hart today. Ankle looks a little bit more healed today wasn't complete uh, garbage. <laughs> I want him to shoot threes more. I want him to shoot threes more, but transi transition buckets is his thing. Got a couple of transition buckets, even though sometimes I feel like he should pass sometimes in transition, just once or twice, <laughs> just once or twice, but overall good game defensively, energy wise, hitting open threes. Josh Hart, another strong game from our guy. Yep. Mm hmm all right yeah. great picking yeah yeah sir yeah yo do you guys have anything you want to get up your chest and you, anything you want to point out last words uh, i got some bro picks you got the bro you got some bros yeah, i think <laughs> if, if we win on sunday that matinee game nick nits in five i don't think that the Cavs will win another game i think we'll close it out in even if we're able to win on Sunday, the momentum would just be too strong in our favor. And I think if that happens on Sunday, the guys have been playing poorly. I hope Quentin Grimes turns back from that right shoulder contusion. Oh. And uh, Emmanuel quickly looks like he's woken up out of his slump. Randall is bound. He, there's no way Randall does four games without having a, a dominant performance. So if we win game four, I think it's a wrap personally. Yeah, I can see that. I'm, 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 I'm so mad. I didn't mention that Quentin Grimes had a shoulder injury. Had yeah. a shoulder injury. Yeah, um, I don't think it's going to be, they call it a contusion, so I don't think it'll be too bad, hopefully. I think this is one of those instances where the depth really helped us out. Um, I was really wanting to see Grimes this game because I felt like when I was talking about all four movement in the beginning of the show, I was talking about Grimes specifically. I saw an action where in the left corner, I don't know who screened Grimes, man. And as he screened him, Grimes curled and Brunson gave him a pass to the corner and he missed the open look. And he missed it, but it was wide open. But I've been begging for actions like that, specifically for Grimes, just, just the whole season. That's it, <laughs> just the whole season. So I was really excited to see that. Um, so I hope when he comes back, we still, we see more things like that implemented in the offense to give your best shooter your quickest shooter at three-point line some clear open looks and i think that can help us blow the game open in another way so yeah uh, get well soon grimes hopefully it's not super super serious he did damage his shoulder to his shooting arm right. yep all right Cheers. ryan ryan g you have anything to say yeah um yeah i do got some bro picks okay yeah my bro picks goes out to the refs who ref the game between the nets and the sixers game three because there was a lot of things that happened <laughs> in that game that just had me questioning what the hell is going on things that make you first go foremost, hmm? <laughs> yeah first and foremost okay claxon scores on mb mb balls to the floor Yes, what Claxton did was grimy. You're not supposed to step over no man. That's disrespect right there. If you, if, if you did that in the streets, it'd be a fight. That's a fact. It, hands, would, hands would be thrown. But as he's stepping over Embiid, Embiid does a kicking action towards the man's jewels. The refs decide it's a flagrant one, and Embiid doesn't get thrown out of the game. But then later on, you decide that, okay, maybe we were wrong for not throwing Embiid out the game. And Harden makes a basketball move where you're taught as a player, if a, if a defensive guy is draped all over you, you try to create space with your off arm and with, when you're dribbling the ball. And that's exactly what Harden did. 
And I don't think he I don't think he intentionally meant to hit O'Neal or who or I forgot his name, you know, like that. I, I think that it was just a regular yeah, basketball honey. move. And he just happened to hit him there and then he fell to the ground and then he called out a flagrant when you throw him out the game. Yeah. Like, come on, refs. Like, what's up with that? Yeah. Bruh. Pretty good picks. If that was Draymond Green, <laughs> the Joel of MB was Draymond Green and he got kicked in the nuts from the floor, that would have been a two-game suspension and an ejection on the spot, man, like for yeah, sure. Yeah, but, but, but here's the crazy thing, though, because they because they brought up this stat the other day. I think I was watching ESPN. They brought up this stat. So basically, I think Embiid's played like maybe 200-something playoff games, and Draymond Green has played near like 1,000 playoff games. In those in those near a thousand playoff games, Draymond Green has gotten maybe, I think he said he's gotten like nineteen flagrant fouls Yeesh. within those within those nine hundred something games he's played in the playoffs. And Embiid has only played two hundred something games, and Embiid has had twenty two flagrant fouls. So they were like, okay, so if you're going by if so if you're going by the precedent of somebody's mm. reputation, how is Embiid not suspended for game four and what it wasn't thrown out the game in game three? If you're really going by a player's reputation when Embiid has had more flagrant fouls than Draymond Green in less playoff games played. Because it's the Stars League, Ryan. It's the Stars League. There's certain Politics. players you're not throwing out the game. I remember you. I remember watching Knicks Bulls in the '90s. Jordan can push off, <laughs> scream at the ref, screaming spit at the ref face to face. I remember. Would not get kicked out the game. <laughs> yep. Some sometimes it's just who you are. Jermon Green, eh, All Star ish, champion ish. Mm, you know, if, but you know, you ain't Steph, so you can go. That's 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 the that's the way it really is in the real world. They're not gonna say that. You're not gonna see that in the in the report. But we know the deal. All right. <laughs> But yeah, Embiid is Embiid is an interesting character. He should definitely have been tossed. And you know what? Nets fans are down bad. My guy at my job, he he's been really oh, we we gonna we're gonna beat the series. We're gonna beat the series. I was like, y'all going about to get swept, man. Y'all yeah. got your chance right now. Embiid is out with a knee contusion. If y'all don't win this game. Oh my, I'm going to be insufferable coming back to work. Insufferable. <laughs> Do you understand? Back. Yo, that man better hide from me because I'm going to be looking for him up and down the work hallways. Trust. You better go on Instagram Live and put that on World Star. Oh my God. Ah, <laughs> oh, I can't wait to watch the Brooklyn Paint Jobs fall. It's my, it's my joy. All right. <laughs> it's my joy. Facts and 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 it, and that what's crazy about it is that they that Nets fans still have the nerve to talk about Knicks fans and they get it smacked by the Sixers in the series. Right. That's Facts. that's the crazy thing about it. Yo, my boy at work, he's making fun of me for losing to the Cavs, and I'm like, at least we won a game. He said, like, you you hype because you own you kept it close. My guy, no moral victories over here. Like you talking about? Oh, we almost won. You, that's a that's a still an L, dog. Like, come on, yeah. man. It's not no participation trophies in the playoffs. Fact. <laughs> Talk about we almost. It is what it is. All right, I, I, I'm I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. <tired. laughs> you talk about it, but, but great win, man. We gonna be back though. We'll be back. I got some shout outs. We'll see, we'll Shout out <clears throat> Stefan W with the super chat says great win. Let's start at the next one. No doubt. I think we're going to win the next game by single digits. We appreciate that super chat. Also that doll in your photo. looks really adorable. Looks like a sweet <laughs> little plug. Uh, I don't have, I don't Is have any broad picks. Dog that's in Josh Hart's angles. <laughs> <laughs> I finally went viral, baby. Let's go. Yeah. I think they got like a combined 2K light. So that, that was a nice little feeling I had there. That was my welcome to Twitter moment. Yeah. Inside um, joke, Lee made, made a, a, a Twitter meme that said Josh Hart's ankles is made out of a dog. He didn't, and 
It was just a picture of a dog as his ankle. He had to be there. It was great. All right. <laughs> yeah, it blew up for about five minutes. Uh, I, I think I spent two seconds on that meme and two weeks on my Sacramento Kings piece that I wrote and uh, got like four lights on that one. So dog, you know how it is. <laughs> that's real life, man. If, if, it you is. Told, if I was to go on Twitter Live and said, F Tom Thibodeau, I would get mad. <laughs> likes, retweets, comments, slander, that a I'll give a comprehensive breakdown of the Knicks offense. <laughs> Two lights. Right, crickets. <laughs> I do I do want to do some shout outs. This has been a great game three win. Uh man, it's been since 2013 that we won two games in a playoff series, which is unfathomable to even say, embarrassing. But I want to give a shout out to all the people who do the hard work behind the scenes, you know, when the playoffs aren't happening, the mods, Alexander, Pitts for Timmy. Winston Ellis, my main man, Fritz, who, man, I, I love this guy so much. Fritz Such a, a badass, hardworking, intellectual dude. Love my man, Fritz. Also, I'm going to shout out my dad for always supporting me on the show, always give, giving me props. It was fun watching the game with him at night. Uh, and also shout out uh, Mike Murphy and Ken for holding the blog down and giving up great content to Knicks fans, man. All right, and my brothers, Ryan and Jay Ellis. Love you guys. All right, love you guys too, man. Appreciate the KOC family. Another strong year. Gonna end it, end it and get strong too. Shoot it to you guys. Always appreciate. And yeah, appreciate all the followers as well who held us down all year long. And is it is funny because we have Lee on the show now. And it's funny when you're introducing like another person because you kind of have to like go through the growing pain of like learning each other, developing the chemistry, and then like going from that and elevating this show and you guys have kind of grown with us through that and it wasn't even you know not to say it's been pretty much it's been pretty smooth for the most part you know what i'm saying but you've grown through us through that and i appreciate you guys for supporting us through the addition of the escobito and ko let's so, go all right. let's go all right, all right but great show guys we can wrap it up here um yeah, Lee, let them know where they can find you, man. Find me on Twitter. I'm going to be going to spend my day all day tomorrow going ham on Cleveland Cavalier fans. I just my, my bruh pick is just like the whole state of Ohio and all their bum ass fans. Uh, I'm just like really disgusted by the, the type of stuff that they post on Twitter after one win. Not, not only a game one win, a game two win, which means you drop the first one. The series is tied 1 1, and you try and talk smack on Twitter. What an embarrassment. And, uh, you know, you're still waking up and going to sleep in Ohio. So good luck with that. Uh, yeah, so find, me on, Back to find me on Twitter <laughs> at underscore Lee Escobedo. L-E-E-E-S-C-O-B-E-D-O. What's up, Pops? Yo, Dicks fans. I, I, just, I just need y'all to do something for me. All right? Because <laughs> we got three. Game five, I need everybody to print out a picture of Joe Kim Noah and bring them Bring it too high, okay? Just, just, just please, please, for me, for me. All right, can, can we just all right? <laughs> Ryan G, let him know what find. You can find me on Instagram at Sir G is chilling. Sir G is chilling. That's S I R G is C H I L L I N. You can also find me at Sir G's Corner. You can also find me on Twitter at Ryan G K O T. And my main man, Julius Randall, waiting for that 20 piece. Bring it, because anyhow, Randall scores a 20 piece, it's going to be an easy win for the Knicks. Let's oh, go. Yeah. Let's go. It'll be easier for the Knicks. Shout out. <laughs> Am's amazement says, can't spell Cleveland without two L's. You're right about that. <laughs> <laughs> right about that. I was arguing with, this, with, with who I thought was the same white girl. I thought I was just arguing with the same white Karen. And I realized there was four different people I was arguing with. They all have the same crusty woman. They all look the same, bro. It's oh, it's all the same crusty care, bro. Oh. Ohio, man. It's like cut and paste. Attack of the clones, man. Let's go. Oh. Man. <laughs> I'm staying away from Here that in joke. Central. I'm staying away oh, from that joke man. in my head. I'm moving on. Cut and paste. Oh, man. And to the next topic. Um, <laughs> Barbie oh, bums. Damn. <laughs> damn, that's how y'all moving on in Ohio cutting paper. Oh, oh damn. Dead, Alexander. Keeping it in the family. Jeez. <laughs> uh, 
and it gets worse. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's over. Uh, <laughs> he just killed it. He just uh, murked the entire state of Ohio. I love it. Uh, salute, salute Ohio. <laughs> yep. Yeah. All right, here you go. Snapbacks, black and white, blue and orange at thenicketownshow.com. All you gotta do is go there, get a uh, click catalog, boom, snapbacks right there. You also click that link right there that Fritz is putting in the chat to buy. Follow us on the KOT show on Twitter, the Naked Time Show on Instagram and Facebook as well. Also, SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, wherever you listen to podcasts. You can listen to the KOT show. Also, one last shout out to FUBU TV. Um, stop listening to TNT and TNT. Stop listening to TNT and Reggie Miller and those guys. Go to FUBU TV and go to MSG. All right. You can watch FUBU. T- you can watch MSG for free for seven days on FUBU TV and tell them we sent you. All right. So do that. And you can also, it's free for seven days, but you can also purchase it after seven days and if you purchase it you get a cut so shout out to fubu tv for working with kot it's cool too because when you click the link you'll see welcome to kot father you see it's cool shout out to fubu tv all right <laughs> is there more jokes going on <laughs> I feel like i'm missing yeah you. man i mean yeah first and foremost before we go i gotta shout out a train with those big old women that said it told you like charles barkley would say the big old woman that said it told you oh my <laughs> god <laughs> <laughs> Bro, y'all going crazy. <laughs> y'all going crazy. Savage, bro. Savage. They, they asked for it, man. Savage. All right, yo. That is our show. Hey, there's a new format going on. I'm letting you guys know. If you want to be here live, you'll catch it live. And then I'm taking it down. I'm putting it back up and in. All right. I'm just letting you know. Thanks to YouTube weird algorithms for this new format. But <laughs> so for live shows, if you just miss it for that night, you miss it. But it will be back in the morning. So shout out to you guys and rock with kids the show. All right. But that is our show. Um, salute to the chat. Thank you to the supporters. And good show, guys. As always. Shout out the World Wide West. Everywhere we go, we leave a worldwide mess. It's a mess out here in these Knicks YouTube streets. That's our show. Knicks win. Gentlemen, sweep on the way, baby. We out of here. Peace.